What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to The Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jay Campbell and I'm making a quick commercial here for seercustom.com, my revolutionary cosmeceutical peptides company, co-founded with my business partner, Nick Andrews, who happens to be one of the world's top formulators. We have the revolutionary Oxano Grow, which completely regrew my hair. If you guys saw my hair about a year ago, I was almost bald. I even had the micropigmentation program from uh, Advantis. And now I've completely regrown my hair. That's just with version one. Version two is now in the marketplace or will be very, very soon. And it is three to five times as more effective than the current version or the original beta version of Oxano. We also have Royal Blue Serum and Sky Blue Cream, which will completely upgrade your face. I mean, I'm almost 50 years old. I have a pretty good complexion. I use it regularly. My wife swears by it. It will reduce fine lines and wrinkles, dramatically improve elasticity, and just the overall look and feel of your face. You feel great on both of them. You can also use them with red light therapy. There's all sorts of great stuff. So go to a seercustom.com. And if you're a first time customer, use the coupon J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I appreciate all you guys. And I send you tremendous love and light. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the founder of the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very, very excited and humbled and privileged and honored today to be joined by the one, the only, the incomparable J.B. Hanley, who is an amazing man and uh, I would say a master of many things. But uh, today he is actually joining uh, this podcast. He's been done two, I think, two separate podcasts with me now. So this will be the third um, to talk about his recently published or actually hasn't published yet. March 23rd. March 23rd. So it's a couple of weeks away, but I've, I have an advanced copy. It's a phenomenal book. It's literally an autism miracle, underestimated, excuse me, an autism miracle. And it's about his son, Jameson, a.k.a. Jamie. And now, obviously, JB has also written How to End the Autism Epidemic um, and is an accomplished financial guru in his own right and the things that he's done in his past. And him and I have become actually good friends over the last, what, dude, four years, I think now, right? So, He's here today to talk about the new book. Obviously, he can mention a little bit of his book. And at some point in the show, we are going to be graced with Jamie, who is obviously the subject of this newest book. So as always, JB, whenever I get a chance to talk to you, it's an honor. You're an amazing man. I mean, actually, let me just drop this. Like you guys had something that happened to you last week, you know, on an airline, which I saw your tweet and I wanted to like, just like blow it up. But then I was like, you know, he's handling it with grace so we won't even have to talk about it. You can talk about it if you want, but uh, man, it's it's an honor to have you here, brother. How are you, man? Jay, I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you for having me. Uh, Always. I've literally never been better, uh, largely due to the subject matter of the book that my son and I co-wrote together that's coming out in a couple of weeks. So thank you for having me on. I'm excited and thrilled to talk about it. And I just want you to know, um, Jamie has never been on camera before. Awesome, man. This will literally be a first. And I checked in with him several times, including today, just to make sure that he was down. Uh, and he is because he has a lot of passion about this topic and wanting to share his experience with other parents and people like him. So. Well, uh, let, me, let me just say that it's an honor that he would come on camera with me and you. Uh, and, and believe me, we're the lucky ones. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Um, okay, so let's go wherever we go with this. I mean, obviously, we always have talking points on this discussion, but I think maybe just you sharing, you know, your story, because obviously your story three years ago, when you wrote, you know, the first book, uh, and you and I, you know, became connected through hormone optimization and all that stuff was totally different than where J.B. Hanley sits now. So maybe share a little bit of your insights from there to here. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. Um, you know, the audience that Jamie and I really care about are other parents of non-speakers with autism, right? That's sure. who we're trying to talk to. And um, I know how it feels because I'm one of them. 
And everybody wants context. So I need to start there with a little bit of a description of Jamie. Um, Jamie is 18 years old. He has a diagnosis of autism. He's a non-speaker, and that's a confusing term for some people. And what that really means is um, Jamie can say words, but he doesn't have conversational ability, and his words are very limited in terms of what he can use. So he could say something like, I want hot dogs, I want to take, sh- I want shower, you know, sort of get very, very basic needs met. But beyond that, he does not use language in order to communicate. And um, he has mannerisms, uh, you'll get to meet him for yourself. And um, there's no doubt when you meet Jamie or see Jamie that he's a special kid, okay? And a lot of other non-speakers present much like Jamie does, and we make our assumptions about them. And one of the assumptions that my wife and I made that turned out to be wildly inaccurate is that we equated the amount of language that he was using to communicate with his cognition, okay? This is a commonly made, I'm gonna call it a mistake, but it's, it's something people commonly do. And because he could speak, he could articulate words, we made this presumption that, well, as his cognition goes up, his word usage will go up like it would for a child with emerging language. Right. Um, And so at 18, Jamie remained a non-speaker. And I got a random phone call from a good friend of mine who has a son named Vince, who's very similar to Jamie. And she started sending me via text these very complex and sophisticated thoughts and paragraphs that she claimed were written by her son. Wow. And remember, her son presents a lot like Jamie does. Of course. And, and so when I first saw these, I was like, well, that's that's impossible. Like, I've met this kid, and how could that be? And, and, and she kept insisting, no, it's really him, and this is not a joke you would ever play right. on another autism parent. And it was like, okay, I need to what's going on? How, what's, and so she basically explained to me that there is a school of thought that basically says that autism is a motor disability, not a cognitive disability. So think about it for a second. If your motor function, your brain is somehow impaired through whatever method, fine motor in your mouth is one of the most complex things you can do. So let's just imagine that you wanted to make your mouth move a certain way, but you simply couldn't. And let's further imagine that moving your digits and even your eyes was really a challenge due to this same motor disability. Well, that's what this school of thought believes autism actually is, not a cognitive disability, a motor planning disability. And this amazing woman named Elizabeth Vossler um, came along and invented this communication method called spelling to communicate. And the basic premise behind it is you point at letters with your arm and you're mostly using your shoulder and that's a gross motor thing. And it's not as hard as trying to teach a child to type or talk. And so these children with these motor disabilities can start to communicate. And she did this after years of trying to teach kids to speak with autism and realizing like they're impaired from even being able to get this going. And so she started to use this method and what she discovered much to her surprise was that these non-speakers who've been basically cast off by all of society and put into life skills classrooms and held to very low standards and treated like they don't understand and talked in front of like they don't understand, and they all experienced this, were actually brilliant. And my friend, whose name is Honey, whose son is Vince, when she called me and explained all this to me, I didn't really believe that what was happening for her son. I believed it was happening for her son, right? Right. I believed her, but I didn't believe that you could extrapolate that to Jamie. And in fact, I was so frustrated by her conviction that Jamie was going to be just like Vince that I like videotaped him that night. And I said it to her like, here's Jamie. And I remember still, this was a very huge day in my life where she wrote back like, oh yeah, Jamie looks way better than Vince. He's going to be a snap, no problem. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. So we literally fly to Virginia where this spelling to communicate was invented. And within the first hour, Jamie's spelling words. And I didn't know he could spell. On day two, Jamie is, um, they're doing, they do these lessons in spelling to communicate. Okay. So 
the topic was something about like meat eating plants, right? It doesn't really matter, but like they do these lessons and then they ask the children to use a letter board that looks like this, right? And they like smile right. and hit end. That's how they communicate. And the communication partner writes down what they said. It's like, it seems very basic and rudimentary, but it takes a long time to get to the point where you're sort of fluent on one of these boards. And um, on the second day, Jamie's there, this amazing teacher, Elizabeth Vossler, she asked Jamie what the opposite of carnivore is. And I'm like, huh? Like, cause that word wasn't in the lesson you just read and Jamie spells herbivore, no wow. problem. And I'm like, what, what is going on? Like, how is this even possible? And um, so we, you know, you need to work at home. It's like, kind of like learning a golf swing. It's really like cognitively they're already there. It's just getting the muscle memory down to the sure. arm to be able to kind of get this going. So it's a, real, a lot like a golf swing analogy. And so my wife and I, we practice at home over the holidays. This was in like December of 2019. And um, in January, we start going down to Oceanside closer to you where we have this amazing uh, teacher named Don Marie. And um, she's also an expert in spelling to communicate. And I got my dad with me because I'm freaking out that this might actually be something. And we are on like day three of lessons. And the, the kind of Nirvana moment when you're using this letter board is when they move from answering known questions, meaning it was in the lesson they just gave you, right. to spouting off, to all of a sudden presenting their own thoughts and feelings. And so we're literally doing a lesson on the Boston Red Sox winning the World Series for the first time in a long time. Like, remember when they hadn't won forever and then they finally won? Yeah, they won like four games in a row, I think, too. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And so we're doing the – Jamie's doing the lesson and my dad and I are watching intently and he's, he's, you know, Fenway park and names of players that are all from the lesson. And he's, he's showing real dexterity in, in spelling. And um, the spelling practitioner, Don Marie decides it's, it's time to take a risk. And the risk is to ask Jamie a question that's not part of the lesson and just kind of see what happens. And so I'm sitting there and my dad's sitting there. And these are the kind of things that are burned in your brain forever. And um, you have to realize a little backstory. I hate the Red Sox. I'm a die in the wool New York Yankee fan. And that four game win in a row was over the Yankees, by the way. Told you. And my dad, who's sitting there, is from Scarsdale, New York, which is why I'm a Yankee fan, because I grew up going to Yankee games. <laughs> so I'm finding this whole lesson to be like, whatever, you know, just trying to I talk to you. And, and um, Don Marie says to Jamie, so Jamie, what did you think of this lesson? And I'm like, oh, shit, wait a minute. That's a question without an a known answer, right? And, and Jamie on the letter board, and it's all on videotape, spells, the Sox won, but the Yankees are champs in my family. Wow. And like, I'm dead, you know. Yeah, you I'm just fall over. My, I can't even look at my dad because we'll just start like heaving with tears. And that was literally the moment where Jamie's life and my life and my family's life changed forever because – what I've now discovered, and I actually believe, I, I think one of the many reasons we wrote the book is because I believe that every non-speaker is just like Jamie, and that's three to five million people just in the U.S. Right. Um, I believe they're all brilliant. Right. And I believe they're trapped, and I believe it's a motor planning disability, not a cognitive disability. Um, Jamie feels equally strongly that that's true. Um, this is incredibly controversial to assert this because – it basically says the ABA therapy model, which is like kind of the autism industrial complex, right? Like that's where all the money is, right. is, is a hundred percent wrong. Right. But they try to kind of modify behavior of these cognitively disabled individuals to help them have the best chance for life. I now have a child. So the dates and times I'm talking to you about all happened, like, like that, that breakout with the um, comment about the Yankees was in January of 2020. Wow. Okay, so we're now talking about 14 months ago. So in that time, I've learned that my son is extraordinarily intelligent, that he was tracking everything the entire time. Um, he's warm, he's caring, he's gracious, he's giving, he's loving. Um, he doesn't miss anything. He speaks Spanish because his brother and sister were drilled Spanish in the living room and he would just sit there and absorb it all. Um, for some reason that we still haven't been able to explain, he's a mathematical savant. And I've learned from other parents of non-speakers who are fluent on the letter boards that their kids are too. So like tonight at seven o'clock, Jamie has his calculus tutor coming over. 
Wow. And they do math at a level that I don't even understand. And he cranks it all and they've switched over to physics and he answers all the questions perfectly. And then I'll ask him, why do you know that? And he'll be like, I don't know. Wow. I just do. And this is, this is not an uncommon thing amongst this, this subset of kids. And so it's, it's pretty extraordinary to think about how sort of badly we've missed the boat with this group yeah. of the most cast off of the autism community who may well actually be the most brilliant of them all. And it's really, it's really sad. Like within the autism. So Jamie goes to an autism school here in Portland, which is a wonderful autism school. Right. But if somebody has a BCBA next to their name, which means they're a specialist in ABA, they won't even acknowledge Jamie's board. They won't sit in a room with him. They won't try to get to know him. There's a big conflict in his autism school because those BCBAs tried to keep him from having his board in the school. And luckily there's enough non BCAs, BCBAs who said that's total bullshit. We are not going to deny this child the right to communicate, but it's so new Right. And there's haters about everything. Oh, it's a Ouija board. Right. It's actually the dad who's doing the, yeah. you know, right. or whoever it is, because Jamie actually works with multiple communication partners. And um, it's as, as anything new and revolutionary and kind of inverting what everybody thought they knew. Exactly. The people set in their ways literally try to keep him down. Think about all he's gone through. And then you have people who are like, no, no, no. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Luckily, the people who run his school are not in that school of thought, and they just have to kind of manage a faculty that literally threatened to walk out when the board came into the school. And I've wow. been warned by people like Elizabeth Vossler, it's never pretty because you're challenging an entire way of thinking. And I think, yeah. I think one of the most beautiful words or phrases, rather, that Elizabeth Vossler introduced for spelling to communicate is what they call the presumption of competence. And what the presumption of competence basically means is that you see a non-speaker, they have all these mannerisms. You don't need to talk down to them. You don't need to think that they don't understand you. You don't need to talk to them like they only understand English a little bit. Um, presume they're brilliant. Exactly. And treat them accordingly. And it was, it was really a trip when we went back to the Growing Kids Therapy Center, which is the actual location where this communication method was invented, because I had been told, hey, when you get there, they're going to talk to Jamie, not to you. They're going to address Jamie, not you. Like, hey, Jamie, great to have you here. Like, they treat these kids like the brilliant kids that they are. And we, we have all the videotape, right, of every spelling yeah. session Jamie's ever been in. And when he sat down for the very first one, this amazing woman, Elizabeth Vossler, she turned to Jamie and she said, I know how smart you are. And I've asked Jamie about, about that moment. And he said, no one had ever said that to me before. It's beautiful. And I said, well, how, how did that make you feel? And he said, well, the first thing I thought was, how does she know? It's like he'd literally been sitting on the secret all by himself. Think about that, dude. Yeah, it's incredible. All by himself for 17 years. And look, I'll be the first to say, I didn't even have his back. Now, I like to think that I always treated him with that presumption of competence, but I didn't know. I yeah. didn't know. And I'm the closest person to him. I'm with him all day. <laughs> yeah. I take him to school every day. I'm with him right. all the time. Did I feel that he understood a lot more than it seemed? Yeah. Yeah. That he could track and they call it receptive language and this and that. But I didn't really know how he was putting it all together. I didn't know if he had dreams. I didn't know how he felt about love. And what, what turns out is he doesn't even have autism. He's a, he has a motor planning disability. Yeah, exactly. A, he rejects the word autism. He well, that's what I was just going to ask you. What is really autism? Again, another coded system that the sick care medical system created to offer a diagnosis then, and then to build their infrastructure of nonsense around. With what I would argue is a nonsense therapy known as ABA, which you have to realize, Jay, ABA is the only thing insurance companies cover. Of course. Okay. So even like his autism school, they couldn't clear out all the ABA people tomorrow because a lot of the parents who are there have their tuition paid by insurance, exactly. which exactly. wouldn't pay if it wasn't an ABA school, right? right? They literally have their hands tied. It's incredible. Um, and, and what's amazing, Jay, so ABA is a very, very behavior modification oriented 
So it's like, look right here. Look at my eyes. Right, look at right, my eyes. Right. Get over here. Right. Wait, wait. We want Put them in you, a box. Yeah, we want you to behave the way we do. Yeah. Right. And what's what's astonishing, dude? So once a week, we are we're on this thing called the Dude Bro Social Hour, where Jamie has six or seven other guys who use a letter board just like he does, and they just have like teen conversations, right? Like it's nice. really cool. But if you start to ask these kids about ABA and what it was like for them, they hate it. It sends into madness. They're like, it's total BS. It's torture for them. Right. And so, I mean, you have this like, <laughs> so there's that side of the complex. Then they give these kids brain drugs and all this other crazy oh, stuff. God, dude. Right. And they, they, tr- and you know, like, like people talk in front of Jamie, like he's not even there. Right. Of course. Right. There's just a yeah. disrespect and, and probably, one of his biggest themes is that he just wants to be respected for how smart he is. And how could that not be one of his themes? Because he's right. literally spent his life being talked down to. Um, and it's true for all these kids. And when you think about it for a second, you're like, wow, they're literally sitting there with a brain that's probably 10 times more powerful than yours and mine. Oh, yeah. And in a way, I don't know exactly why, but it's sort of like when you have that sensory deprivation, like other things take over. They're the keenest observers of the world that you'll ever meet. They don't miss anything. Right. Right. And they're sitting there with their, this little secret all by themselves. You know, it's, it's crazy when you start to extrapolate that over millions of people. And, you know, because we've been out this for over a year now, Jay, I've had the chance to see other kids go completely round trip. Meaning like I talked the parent into giving it a try. They went, they got busy, they got after it. And then they had that day where their kid opened too. And I'm just going to tell you like a really quick story. There's a kid named Cade, who I mentioned in the book, who's become one of Jamie's great friends, who's now open, as we say, an open communicator. And his mom believed me, you know, or took a flyer. Yeah. And uh, Cade's mom happens to run like a computer server refurbishment company. And so she's asking Cade just this past Christmas, Cade, what do you want for um, Christmas? And Cade goes, uh, I want a computer server. She's like, well, why do you want that? He's like, because I know three programming languages and I would like to program. And she's like, yep. how do you know programming languages? And it's, it's the osmosis from mom's job that he just picked up on over the years because it's part of the family conversation. And then he cited two movies specifically where they showed the code on the screen for a moment and he screen grabbed it with his brain and extrapolated it and put it all together. Yeah. That's how amazing these kids are. So amazing. So, um, so listen, I'm going to invite Jamie, if you're up for it. Of course, please. In the conversation. I just want to explain a couple things for the audience and for you. So this is important because generally speaking, kids actually start on a stencil with just eight letters on it. And, and like you kind of work your way up to this board. This is called the laminate. Okay. That's just the nomenclature of spelling to communicate. This is the laminate. This is portable. It's just a simple alphabet. Jamie would crank on here and hit end when he's done. And I would repeat it for him. And this is where a lot of kids stop. Okay. But the doubters would love to say that it's a Ouija board operated by Now there's plenty. I, I talk about this in the book. There's, plenty of science that refutes that. I have a million examples of where Jamie was in a session with a a letter board teacher and he told them something they could have never known, right? Right. I mean, how many of those do you need? Of course. Um, But then the other thing that's true is that a percentage of these children, they actually move to a keyboard, okay? And I have a keyboard with a ring on the back because I still hold it for Jamie like a letter board because he's in transition. Nice. But the place that this is going for Jamie is to a fixed position keyboard, at which case all the other people step away, at which case he's at 100% independent communication. Exactly. And Jamie wants to be independent with the keyboard and he wants to be that way by summer. He loves that he can be at school in an academic setting with a communication partner, but he wants to be in a school in an academic setting alone like every other kid and independent. So. When I asked him about, and so my book only talks about this because we hadn't started this by the time the manuscript got turned in. But when I asked Jamie about the interview and which form of communication he wanted to use, he said he'd rather do the keyboard. And so when you hear the British voice after he hits return, <laughs> you'll know that he chose that voice himself. I was about to say, I was going to say he definitely chose that voice. <laughs> yeah, that he wanted to sound like James Bond. And so you get the same, his output is actually higher on the keyboard yes. anyway. 
Um, but I'm just explaining to parents that not every kid graduates to keyboard because obviously this requires more fine motor. And um, some kids stay on the letter board, you know, forever after because that's what they love. And in Jamie's case, he's just kind of like moving on. And he's actually moved us back into speech therapy for him, too, because he kind of wants to now master it all. So with that, big age. Come on, big guy. He's listening to his music while he's sitting back there. Uh, Jamie, this is Jay. As you know, why don't you come have a seat over here? So this is my beautiful son. Um, <laughs> you'll notice the amazing do that he's sporting. And one of the like millions of examples of how things change when your son can actually communicate with you is that I've always kept Jamie's hair really short and he's like, I don't want a haircut. And we didn't even know he had this amazing curly hair. Right. But every time I ask him if he wants a haircut, he says no. And the last thing in the world I'm going to do is not honor his request. So Jamie, what do you have to say to Jay? Uh, Jay, nice to meet you. Can you hear that? Okay. Of course. We can yeah. turn it up a little bit. Maybe Jamie, it's an honor to meet you too, brother. Yeah. Let me just check the volume here. This is now what he takes to school. He stopped using the letter board at school. Yeah, I'll turn the volume all the way up. So there you go. Okay. So Jamie is less nervous than 98% of the people who come on the podcast who have never done a podcast before. And that is not me BSing you. That is true. He has, he's, he's in his truth. He is. He is. He's a chill dude. Um, you know, he feels a tremendous amount of responsibility towards other non-speakers. That's what really kind of gets him up in the morning. And, you know, he even has him at his own school, but you know, the, the pain of what it's like to be in his position is something that he feels deeply. And he's, I mean, I, I don't like to speak for him to be honest with you, but like, you know, this is an opportunity to like help a lot of people in his position. So is, is it okay if I speak? Absolutely. So Jamie, so I see you as literally an ascended master who has come back into physical form to teach us what it's like to understand people who don't function as quote unquote normal people, but to do it from a way that you are cerebrally way beyond us. So the lesson is in us, in our system, figuring out what it is you are truly capable of. I think you get it. <laughs> oh my God, dude, all the hairs of my right arm just rose up. Wow. Jamie, it is an honor, man. You have no idea how honored I am right now. I feel like you are the greatest guest I've ever had on my podcast, and that's not a joke. Your ability is transcendent, my brother. I want to point something else out to you, Jay, while I'm doing this. Um, <laughs> when, when spelling to communicate instructors first start working with somebody, they'll do what's known as prompting. They'll point up, they'll point sideways. They'll give them a real rhythm underneath their spelling. So they go C and then A and then N. They're like, it's like a dance. They're like supporting. Sure. And um, critics will look at all that and say, it's not them. They don't, they don't appreciate um, the path that these kids are on. Right. Training wheels would be the perfect analogy, right? But they just isolate that moment in time and go, aha, because they're just, they're just haters. And, um, you know, you don't really need that many independent spellers right. who used to use a letter board to prove all of them wrong, right? Because the, the independent spellers say, yes, the letter board helped me get here, right? How many of those do you need before you realize they're all full of shit? Yeah. And so um, one of the things that I'm really careful about, because I know that at some point we would be doing video, is you can see I'm not really prompting Jamie at all. We're, But I just want to like, hey, parents, it, it takes a while to get to this point. Like I'm more than a year into it. And, and there are many times where I actually put the board on the table right? To fix it. And he's still sure. typed. We're in a transition right now, but I don't want parents to think that you get here on the first day. And for all the haters, yeah, they do prompt. And then they pull the prompt back when it's the right time. And Jamie's been in the hands of professionals who've really helped him get to this point. And he's put in hundreds of hours sure. practicing that. And that's why I can sit here with a keyboard and basically say nothing. And Jamie can crank out what he's cranking out. So I just want to give a little context for people because it can be confusing if they're like just starting 
They're like, my son's not doing that. It's like, no, it takes a lot of time to get to this point. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay Campbell. Quick commercial for the Optimized Tribe with U.S. Navy SEAL Michael Jaco and I every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. There is not a single group online where you will get the highest level intel that Michael and I can provide you from mastering intuition to fully optimizing your hormonal health to improving your fitness, to raising your vibration and increasing your consciousness. There isn't a single group online with two dudes like Michael and myself helping people become the best version of their self. It's literally $99 a month and you get a 90 minute call with me and Michael every single Monday night. Don't wait another second. Sign up now at the link, theoptimizedtribe.com. I appreciate you guys and I send you tremendous love and light. Yeah. So Jamie, um, what what would you like to gain from this podcast? Like, what would you like to say to people who are like you, who are not getting the help, who are being misidentified, who are being misunderstood? What can you say to the world? How, how can you help them? What would you like to see to help them? How can, how can we, people like us that have podcast audiences, how can we help you and people like you? Or maybe it should be, how are you going to help us, bro? <laughs> I know it's him because I can see his eyes and his brain processing everything. Oh, I know. You're watching him go back and forth between I the I mean, keyboard. how can anyone dispute this? That, that's why I was excited that you wanted to use the keyboard because you could see the back and forth. I want parents to know what will like me. So what he said, well, I just want to give context because <laughs> it's really important. He spelled, I want parents to know we're all like me. Okay. And I just want to give you a little background, Jay. Jamie and I know full well that the only way to save the non-speakers, and I don't use that word lightly, is through the parents. Right. Because if they don't have a parental system that will take the leap, take the time, put in the hours at home, they're not going to get out of the hole. They can't do it themselves. They, right. The motor disability is literally prevents them from picking up the phone and calling the practitioner and walking right. down there and paying them, you know, this 75 bucks an hour or whatever. Right. right. So he says, I want parents to know we're all like me. And by we, he obviously means other non-speakers. Of course. Yeah. yeah. You know, what's crazy. I did the math. Like any autism parent, parent has yeah. spent unbelievable amounts of money to try to help their children. Right. right. Every one of them, no matter what they think caused it or whatever. This miracle, by the, time, by, the, by the day that we hit his comments about the Yankees, we'd spent less than $2,000 on lessons Wow! <laughs> to awesome. save our family, basically. Yeah. It's crazy. Amazing. I want everyone to know we can all do this. So he said, I want everyone to know we can all do this. And just for, <laughs> just for the sake of the haters, like, I'm literally getting a transcript. <laughs> Man. You know, I'm Man. getting a transcript of our conversation Man. from Jamie. Man. 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 <laughs> so Jamie will, um, Jamie will say things like that to me that don't really make any sense. And the only way through it is like to repeat it. And so this is like one of a million examples of what. So I asked Jamie, I said, what does that mean? Right. When you say that to me and you want me to say it back. And he said, <laughs> he said, he said, it means you repeat it. And I know, I know you love me. That's what I can see. I mean, I can feel his energy. His field is pure love and you are connecting into that resonant frequency when you guys are connected with each other. Totally. I mean, he is a being of pure love and light. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah. That's just who he is. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously I have so many questions for him. I, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to overwhelm him. I mean, I mean, so, so, so Jamie, what can we learn? Truthfully, what can we learn from you? What do you want us to learn from you? Don't judge us by our mannerisms. So he said, um, don't, don't judge us by our mannerisms. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, um, one of the best, other kind of mantras that I heard from growing kids therapy center is never read body language right. with a non-speaker. Okay. They're always paying attention. You don't need to say like, you know, eyes on or anything like that. Just let them 
be themselves. I now have realized that he's tracking a hundred percent of the time. Right. And again, the keenest observers in the world, they don't miss a thing. And, um, you know, I, I find that non-speakers, they tend to want to hang out with each other, right? Like that's, they don't need to be like extended into society. They want to have their own community, but they really just want the ableists of the world, which is most of us, honestly, <laughs> to just respect them, to just yeah. respect their differences and not be put off by it and, and not make presumptions that aren't there and treat them <laughs> like they're the intelligent beings that they are. <laughs> I mean, JB, if you think about it, you know, the, just the whole idea of quantum physics is like attracts like, and these are extremely high functioning beings of obviously great resonant light. And, love. <laughs> and, you know, I could go all, I could, you know, go off on a tangent right now. on like the only reason that we're here as humans is to give and receive love. All he can do is give and receive love. I mean, he's at a resonant vibration. You know, if I'm looking at the Hawking scale of like love and light, like he doesn't have, you know, anything. Well, it's interesting I mean, you do that, Jay, because like when we talk about priorities and everything else, yeah. it's family and it's love. Exactly. It doesn't about money, you know, no, like to continue to, no. he wants to go to college, he wants to keep studying. But his it, it, it's one of the many great ironies of this whole thing. They talk about how, People with autism aren't affectionate. You can already see for yourself, that's a complete, you know, bullshit. But um, his family and his friends and love, that's what matters the most to him. He's always focused on relationship. Of course. Right. You know, he loves I mean, obviously, he's, uh, again, and this is just a, 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 a truism. I mean, people like Jamie. And it's not a label. It's just a beingness is a higher frequency than an average human being. And that's not saying that an average human being, you know, isn't where they should be either. It's just that he is essentially possessing special, special skills, like surgically advanced skills of being a person that understands what we're all here to be. And that is again, to give and receive love because it, as JB, you know, it's not to make money and to have nice things and, to have notches and to have titles and have all this stuff. That's all bullshit. We are all here to give and receive love. That's the only thing that matters at a soul level. And that's what he's doing. Like literally as he exists, I mean, every moment, you know, it's, I mean, it's amazing. I think we are all connected and need to bring non-speakers into orbit. So I think we are all connected and need to bring non-speakers into orbit. You are amazing, man. We are all connected. We are all, it's all about unity. My God. So Jamie, I have so many questions for you. So Jamie, you just need, you don't need anything, but people like me and your dad, you just need to ask you more questions. <laughs> you probably solve the problems of the world. We, we parents of like, there's like, I taught you about that once a week social hour. We're like, if we could just put these six boys in a room, like, 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 pick, just pick a topic, like, please solve it. That's what I mean. String them all together and they'll change the world. Mm -hmm. I think we are the most intelligent. He I said, mean, I think we are the most intelligent. I don't think it's any doubt. I mean, non speakers. <laughs> well, uh, what does Jamie know about the dolphins? <laughs> we talked about this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have more questions. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He loves dolphins. We were literally in Hawaii. Because that's the Hawaii same frequency. Christmas. Yeah, we were in Hawaii over Christmas, and we were on a big sailboat, and we were surrounded by them. He was right down there. Oh, I'm sure and he was connected brilliant. with them. So he said they are brilliant. Yeah. So I, I was just with the dolphins myself in September in, uh, in Cancun and I swam with them. My wife and I, we have, I spent four hours with them and, uh, they definitely give off an energy that humans don't even remotely understand. Yeah. Jamie um, <laughs> picks up the same frequency from horses. And so it's really interesting because he doesn't like to ride horses because it messes with his vestibular right. system. Sure. But he likes to, um, he'll drape his whole body over them we have a horse farm right next to his school so right, this is right. a frequent occurrence and he he drapes his whole body over the horses we have like these amazing pictures of it and they totally get him 
And so yeah, the energy field. Yeah, yeah, totally. And like, so they're just like the most calm, just, amazing, like spirit animals. And Jamie's like loves to be around them. Yeah. How, how is uh, Jamie around dogs? Not the same. Wow. I can explain why. I think I, like if it's a super calm, big dog, you know, then yes. But if they're dirty and whatever, he actually kind of gets put off by the. Wow. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Literally amazing. Um, so how does Jamie, so what does Jamie want to do? Like, what is his big picture goal? Like, what do you ultimately want to solve, Jamie? I want to go to college and study neuroscience. Let me make a recommendation. Clinical interventional neurobiology. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he already has his whole life dialed in, dude. He already knows exactly what he's going to do, which is ahead of 98% of kids his age. Yeah, I think that... I like that. He said, I like that. So he's about a year away from getting a regular diploma. Like he literally got pulled out of the life skills class, which was insulting, and put into the high academic class at the same school with a whole different group of kids, Right. He's catching up on high school. He, he's about to test out a math like all together. Yeah. And then, um, thankfully for us, there are a group of pioneering parents ahead of us. Um, you actually have a school down in SoCal called Cal Lutheran. Yeah, and I know. They've had, they've had a number of letterboarding students go through there already. Wow. And so they're positioned to accommodate a guy like Jamie. So he he's very interested in Cal Lutheran because he obviously wants an institution that respects him and gives him the accommodations that he'll in, invariably need. Although at the pace we're going, I mean, he might be just down to being a pure independent keyboarder, right. Without even needing an aid or anything else. And, and he's made it very clear. He said to us like once a week now, I want to be independent. Like that's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's going to be because the, the will and the intention of being it guarantees it. They all want to go to college. It's amazing. You know, they've all been like, undereducated by their system. They've, they've educated themselves to their own amazing observational skills. I can't wait for college. I can't wait for college. So awesome, man. Yeah. I would say that's true for all. You know what? We're going to give him a break. I like to kind of keep him within a certain zone. Jamie, thank you so much, brother. Love and light to you, my you friend. Music, Great job. He was amazing. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. I mean, there's no way that anybody who watches this podcast can, can, deny or dispel what was watching. I mean, you could clearly see cerebral function. He even has his tongue rolled up to the top of his mouth while he's thinking, which is a, usually a sign of a deep thinker. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, like there will be haters and I've really wondered whether to even address it. Cause I'm just kind of like, you know, whatever, then don't do it. You know what I mean? Like, fine. Then don't do it. Don't read the book. Don't, you know, what the hell do I care? I can't save everybody. Right. No. All I can do is all we're doing is sharing our story and then we're exactly. going to go on with our life and enjoy it. So. I mean, bro, this has been so profound. You don't even, I told you, I didn't even really want to talk to you anyway. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I mean, this is such a profound podcast. I have goosebumps and hair standing up on the back of my neck. So, okay. For you then to implore to other parents, because a lot of people are going to see this because I have a, a, a good feeling that yeah. even, the, even the dark side can't do anything bad uh, to this. Like, what would you implore to parents sure. of non-speakers to do at this moment once they yeah. watch this podcast? I mean, honestly, Jay, that's probably the best question, right? Because um, that is the whole reason we wrote the book. Of course. Just, you know, I know what it feels like, Okay. And I know where I am now and I feel such tremendous gratitude. And the, the thing that I would say to a parent of a non-speaker who's watching this show is I also, I tried to pigeonhole my friend's son who was spelling these remarkable things as somehow being different from my own son. There must be something they missed, <laughs> some extraordinary gift. I just, it's just cognitive dissonance. 
And so if you're going through that right now and you're kind of watching Jamie and going, well, no, my kid could never do that. And he must have just not noticed that it was always there and they got lucky and this and that. I just want you to know, I thought the same thoughts. And when I took him back to Virginia on the first session where this stuff was not like it is today, I still didn't know if it was going to be possible. And when we left there and he'd spelled um, uh, herbivore, right? I was like, well, maybe it's a parlor trick, right? You know what I mean? Like, like you got to understand, like, hope is such a dangerous drug for autism. Of course. Of course. There's such a hangover from trying to get high off of it. And by the time we have kids in their teens and whatever else, um, it's really hard to take another hit of that bong, the hope bong, right? And so I totally get how parents would feel that way. And, and I would just tell you, I felt the same way and just power through. And we, we often say, like amongst parents like us, we will, we will bridge hope for you until you have your own, right? On behalf of other parents. So I bridge you some hope and just take that leap. It's so, so worth it. And the other thing, Jay, that I would say is like, parents will start to wonder about like the age of their child and the possibility, right? So kids as young as 12, 11, maybe even 10 can start to do this, right? They need yeah. some level of just like foundational spelling and everything in there. But on the age side, I just heard from Don Marie, who's our um, practitioner down in Oceanside. She had like a 32 year old oh, who had never letterboarded before who became fluent very quickly and is now prolific in wow. doing videos and everything else. And so it's kind of never too late because remember, you don't need to do anything up here. This is all fine. It's just a matter of getting it, mm -hmm. myelinating a connection to the arm. Right. It's really right. nothing more. The analogy I would use is with a stroke victim who's taught to speak again or move an arm again or whatever it is. It's no different. There's neuroplasticity, right. myelination, and it happens through repetitive processes. That's all we're doing here, okay? So it can happen for any kid really at any age over the age of you know, 9, 10, 11, somewhere in that zone. But if you have a 40-year-old non-speaker, get them going. Like, it doesn't matter. They can still do this. So I'm so profoundly moved by this. Like, how can I help? Because, like, my ideas right now are just, like, how do we get more of them together in some sort of group functioning opportunity because it seems like again it's frequency and vibration and energy and if they can all be together like even a 35 year old non-speaker who doesn't have the myelin activation if they're around jamie and all these guys who do guys and gals i, I can't imagine that they're just not going to link up it's going to be like you know oh, it's Elon Musk is neural link it's immediate so like when we um advocate here locally we always invite the parents and the non-speaker over to the house to meet. Right. And once somebody sees Jamie spell, it's over. Like right. any doubt that they had, or what is this really about? Right. It's over, right? Just right. as like you saw it. And, you know, imagine sitting in the same room with him. And most people are moved to immediate tears right. when they see him do it. Um, and so you're right. Getting them together is really important. So, um, there's one organization, it's i-asc.org, the International Association for Spelling to Communicate. It's run by Elizabeth Vossler, who I hope wins a Nobel Prize someday. And they do um, all kinds of amazing get-togethers for non-speakers. Um, you know, we're, we're building a location here in Portland. We're calling it the Speller's Barn where nice. we have like community events and allow them to really just be around each other all the time. As these kids age out of high school, it's like going to be like an adult learning center and that kind of thing. And so if you happen to be in, if you happen to be in Portland, Oregon and you have a speller, I probably already know you, but if Bye. you don't, you know, come running. And um, I think Jay, that just, just spreading the word and just the fact that, you know, you've literally put on video something that most people have never seen before um, and having some passion about talking to people about it. We just all have to start getting this word out that we may have gotten this whole autism thing wrong. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of do have tears. I'm not going to cry on my podcast, even though I probably should. Um, JB, man, I love you, man. I love your son. I love what you're about. I love everything that you've ever done. I mean, you are an amazing human being. I mean, your books, 
It's just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss for words. So if people want to connect with you on social media and obviously buy the book, where, where do they go? Um, I've been using the Generation Rescue Facebook page, so you can go right. there. And then I have a blog called JB Handley Blog, and you can kind of figure out how to get connected to me from that. I have a Twitter handle as well, at Gen Rescue. Um, you can find me there. And, um, you know, I really hope people read the book. It tells, it, the book was written to really tell the story, to really give parents an understanding of how you do this. Like I, I tell it in a narrative format that's got some suspense to it. But at the end of the day, it was written for other parents to understand, like, this is possible. You can do this, too. And I, I share all the doubt and all the confusion and all the, like, tortured thinking that I go through to not believe this. And, you know, how could this be? And sort of Jamie continually proving to me that this is really real, Dad. Like, it was him. It was him who kept coming at us and showing us what he could do and saying these amazing things. And many of his amazing quotes are in the book. And there's a whole section of Q and A between me and Jamie talking all about this experience. And so I hope that other parents of non-speakers will read the book and find the inspiration to take the leap to give this a try for themselves. Amazing. The book uh, again launches the last week of March or is it? It's March 23rd. It's on Amazon right now for pre-order. And then it, it's going to be available on March 23rd. So just 12 days from now. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to get this podcast out in two weeks. But oh yeah, I, I should think about that. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> Jay, no, it's already out. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, I mean, it, it really depends on my company and the queue and everything. I mean, I'm going to demand as soon as I get off. I'm going to send an email and said, "I will." Yeah. But uh, I mean, honestly, Jay, I mean, I, J, J, JB, I'm I'm humbled that I have the opportunity to ex, you know express with you and feel, you know what he just did. I mean, again, you know, it, I mean, it couldn't have been better. I mean, I mean, in, in all honesty, I mean, like I had no reservations whatsoever anyway, but like that to me, you know, shows to anyone who watches this podcast, like he is a savant and he has a sense of humor. I mean, there's nothing dysfunctional about him. Again, it's like you said, like he is literally higher functioning than us, but just, um, you know, due to motor, you know, neurons not firing correctly or whatever it is. And, and again, it's not a label. It's just what it is. It's like, you know, they, they're looked at differently and it's, we have to end it. Yeah, totally dude. And I'm thrilled. I mean, you know, I didn't really know how he would handle the, you know, discussion or whatever. And he's just same old guy, no different. That's just no, how yeah. I interact with him all the time. He's amazing, man. I mean, Jamie, if you're listening, brother, I love you, man. I, I truly appreciate you. You are an amazing, amazing human being many of us could do on our best day. We're not you. So keep doing you, man. Keep shining in the light. If Jay Campbell or anybody that I'm associated with can help either of you guys in this mission and this purpose, you know, you don't ever have to hesitate one text or one call and I'm on it. So awesome, again, man, awesome, man. awesome man. So Thank for you. all of you amazing people out there, please, please spread this message spread the mission of this podcast share it with other uh parents, parents. who are dealing with autistic children everybody here's the thing jay every single viewer or listener knows somebody exactly every single one does just send them the link yep. let them make their own decisions send them the beautiful. link beautiful okay and we'll, and we'll do that so you guys uh, please again go to generation rescue on facebook um you can hit up jb on twitter it's gen rescue his instagram is j handley public and again man i'm just i'm just honored I'm, I'm so honored to be here with you guys tonight and thank you so much again jamie remember raise your vibration to optimize your love creation we will see all of you guys very soon <laughs>